Hey everyone, it's me, Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi out here in Northern California. Welcome to the Be Well Zen Tangle class for the Napa Public Library. I'm so excited to be sharing this with you. So let's talk about the things that we're going to need for class. I'm going to be working with the Micron P and Pen. The IdentiPen from Sakura for extra puddling work. The Jelly Roll from Sakura. I have an 08, but you can use a 10 as well. I'll be working with a graphite pencil and a tortillon. If you don't have a blending stump, don't worry about it. Grab a Q-tip out of the bathroom. It's a great tool. You know me, I'm a Prismacolor girl, so grab your Prismacolor pencils. Now if you don't have Prismacolor pencils, don't worry about it. Grab whatever color pencils you have and just play along. I'm going to be working with the Genesis tile from the Tangled Yogi Shop. This tile is four and a half inches by four and a half inches. It's super, super smooth and great for working with color pencil. But if you don't have the Genesis tile, go ahead and grab your favorite sketchbook, draw a square that's four and a half by four and a half inches, and play along. So with that said, let's get started with the Be Well Zen Tangle class. So many of you know that I like to take a moment to get centered before we have class, but I wanted to just take a moment to talk about Zentangle for a second today. You know, Zentangle has been such a blessing in my life. It has given me the quiet spaces to step away from the world at large and just have a quiet space to retreat to. It's a place of solace. It's a place of relaxation and it's given me so much joy and reprieve from anything that the world wants to dish up. And so I wanted to just say that because today is a class called Be Well and because it is Mental Health Awareness Month, I just wanted to talk about what a blessing Zentangle had been for me and I hope that it is for you as well. So let's go ahead and take a comfortable seated position. Allow your spine to grow comfortably tall here. Let your hands rest in your lap. And if you're okay with it, allow your eyes to close for a moment. And let yourself just be right here, right now, in this space. Feel your breath as it rolls in and as it rolls out and just be present with it. Feeling the flow of the inhalation and feeling the release of the exhalation. Inhaling, feeling your body expand with breath and as you exhale, feel the release. And one more deep breath right here. And slow exhale. And as we stay with our breath here for the next few moments, I'm going to share a quote by Mandy Hale. And she says, It is not selfish to love yourself, to take care of yourself, and to make your happiness a priority. It is a necessity. And I think she's so right. And taking in one more deep breath right here. And slowly exhaling it out. And know that what you're doing is necessary. And wiggling in the fingertips, wiggling in the toes. And when you feel ready, gently blink the eyes open and let's take care of ourselves. So let's begin the regular old-fashioned Zen Tangle way here. I'm just going to start by putting my dots in my corners here. And you can see that I've got my graphite pencil in my hand. I just happen to have a mechanical pencil here. And I'm going to go ahead and just create my border here. Just really nice and soft taking it easy 
and going nice and slow. Remember, the more you rush, the more your lines give you away. I'm just going around and creating my border just like so. So that you have something that looks a little bit like this. Now once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look for the middle of the top line and make a little dot. And then I'm going to look for the middle of the side line and make a little dot. And I'll try to line them up as best I can on the other side and down below. And once I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to let my lines guide me here or my dots guide me here. And I'm going to turn my piece and divide again. So what we're doing right now is we're building our string for the piece. And so hopefully you have ended up with four squares going across your piece as well. Now we're going to continue and make a diamond going through the center. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to make a diagonal line going through this piece and a diagonal line going through this piece right here. So both of those have a diagonal line and I'm just going to turn my piece and go ahead and go again. And once I have that, I'll have a little diamond in the center. So you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back we're going to learn our first tangle. So I've picked up my pen here and I'm going to go ahead and ink in my diamond in the piece. I'm going to take my time with it. Now once I've had a chance to ink in the diamond, and you can see it's not totally perfect, but it will do just fine. I'm going to go out to my corners here and I'm going to ink in the triangle of each corner and I'll come into that and I'll give it just a little bit of an aura on the inside. So I'm going to do three dots. These are my takeoff and land points here. And I'll do a nice aura inside of the triangle here. And I'm going to go to each corner and do that very same thing. You go ahead and do yours as well. So let's get familiar with our first tangle. I've gone ahead and just drawn a diamond about the same size as what we just did on our other tile. And I'm going to show you how to do the tangle and then we're going to put it into our composition. So if you want to grab a scratch piece of paper, you can go ahead and do so. So I'm not sure if it's meant to be a word or if it's meant to be just initials, but it's A-I-H-S-D and uh, it's by Teresa Fiebler. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and just make a very light guideline for myself with a pencil in the center here. Once I have that, I'm going to pick up my pen and I'm just going to go from the center point here and I'm going to step out about three quarters of an inch and make a dot going in all directions. And let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit more on this. I'm going to start the way that we start with bales with a seed-like shape. I'm going to turn the tile clockwise here and I'm going to do it again. Once I've got that the way that I want it to be, I'm going to come back to center just the way that we started out and you can see there's my flower. I'm going to grow the flower where the valleys are in here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come out. Now you'll notice that I've got these two points right here. When I come out, I'm going to go a little bit past those two points. And I would say this is about three quarters of an inch to an inch. 
and I want them to be about the same size. Once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to connect them back to the flower. You'll see that I'm landing just a little bit below the point there. I'm going to turn my tile clockwise and I'm going to go to the next one. Notice how I'm kind of lining them up. Coming to the next one. Always turning clockwise here. And coming to the next one. Coming back to center here. I've got a really nice flower going on. I'm going to come back to the original piece right in here and I'm going to grow out about three quarters of an inch. I'm going to do the same thing over here, same thing over here, and same thing over here. I'm going to connect them back to center. Turning my tile clockwise. Turning my tile clockwise. and turning my tile clockwise again. Coming back to center here, and it's already starting to look quite beautiful. I love the shape. It's really, really nice. I'm going to go back to these little indentations, the ones that are on the inside, and I'm going to let them extend out about three quarters of an inch. Once I have that, I'm going to come to the first one and I'm going to connect it back to center here. So you can see I'm just below the points here, turning my tile clockwise. Turning my tile clockwise. And turning my tile clockwise. I'm going to do one more set and these are going to go in the corners here. So I'm just going to extend out and I'll go ahead and connect. Turning my tile going to the next corner and connect. Turning my tile go to the next corner coming out and connect. And one more time and connect. So that when I come back to center, I have this beautiful shape in the center. Now if you need to pause me here for a moment, go ahead and do so and catch up. So now that we know where we're going with this, we're going to add a couple of different elements into the piece just to make it a little bit different, but also really, really fun. So I'm actually going to take my mechanical pencil here and work with a mechanical pencil so that we can do some shifting of the lines. I'm going to start in the center of my piece here, and I'm going to go ahead and put a little circle in the center. I'm going to put a little aura around that in the center. Now once I've got that, I'm going to start again almost the same way that we did the first time. I'm going to come out about half an inch in each direction. And I'm going to connect to the piece by putting my petal in. So we're just changing it slightly here. Once I've got my petals in, I'm going to grow out just the same way that we did before. Coming out about three quarters of an inch in each direction. Still working with my pencil here. Turning my piece and connecting.
turning and connecting. Turning and connecting. Once I've got that, I'm going to start to grow out from the center again, about three quarters of an inch and about three quarters of an inch, same way in this direction and same way in this direction. Connecting. You can see that I'm coming down just below the points here. Turning connecting just below the points. Just below the points. And look at how cool that's already looking. I'm loving this. Let's grow just a little bit more here. I'm going to come to these inner points here and start to grow outward. And I'm going to go ahead and connect and connect. Turning my tile, connect and connect. One more time, connect and connect. And last one, connect and connect. Once I've got that, I'm going to do one last growth spurt here. So I'm going to grow right here, right here, right here, and right here. And I'm going to connect. Turning my tile clockwise, always clockwise here. Last one right here. Super fun, super easy, right? So we've got this all set up where we've got our piece ready to go. I'm going to pick up my pen and I'm going to do an overdraw on the piece. However, I'm not going to do the middle lines. I'm going to take the middle lines out because we're going to put in a beautiful tangle while we are shading the piece. So all I'm doing is I'm putting in my arches. So I'm going to turn my tile, make it work for my hands here, and all I'm doing is my arches. Not the middle line, just working my way out. And this is also really great for building the understanding of the tangle as well, because you're just doing it over again one more time. So that'll be the third time in the video that you've done it. Coming around. Taking your time with it. Starting to work my way outward here. working my way all the way out. Each time not doing the middle line, I'm just doing the exterior here. Just like so. And hopefully you have something that looks a little bit like this. <laughs> All right, so you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine, and then when we come back, we're going to start to add to this tangle. So I've picked up my gummy eraser that I'm going to be using to remove those lines that are in the center of the piece here. And, you know, I always like to clean up my gummy eraser just by, you know, mushing it around and getting it nice and clean, and then I can come in 
and just remove my lines from it. I love the gummy erasers because they don't have any debris that they leave on the paper, which is really, really nice. So if you are looking for a good kneaded eraser or a gummy eraser, my favorite is the Faber-Castell. I think they're the best on the market. They don't tend to dry out as much as the other ones do. I've had the other ones and this one's my favorite. So you can see that I've got this all nice and cleaned up on the page here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in with my pen and I'm going to start to create an aura in my petals. You're going to see me work my way down vertically in this piece. I'm going to turn the tile and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to turn the tile and do it again. Turning the tile. And one more time. Continuing. Once again, turning the tile and taking your time. And last one right here. So you can see that that really builds it up and gives it a really nice feel. Now when we come in to do shading, we're going to do some wallpaper inside of this really fun tangle. But in the meantime, we're going to start by working in our outer triangles as well. So many of you might know that uh, May was um, Mental Health Awareness Month and so Zentangle headquarters has been doing some really fun stuff on their website where they've been taking triangle like tiles and doing small Zentangles every day and it's been great and we're gonna do a tangle called well and we're gonna put it into our triangle so well is one of my favorite tangles in Zentangle and what it looks like is you take a circle you put it in the center and then you come down from the corner here and it looks like a B doesn't that look like B as in boy the letter B and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn my tile and I'm going to come from this corner and connect and then I'll do it one more time and turn from this corner and connect. And you can see that it creates this really beautiful tangle. Now what we're going to do is we're also going to do an aura in the center of each of these neat little shapes that this has created. So you can see that I'm just going to come in and create these really nice auras in the center of well. such a fun tangle. So let's go ahead and bring it into our piece. I'm going to come into the corners here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come to the center point right here and then I'm also going to come out from the top at two different spots and I'm going to make a V-like shape that divides the space and you can see that this V-like shape has a little bit of a curve to it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make an aura on each side of that V. 
So let's go around to each of these triangles and do just that. So I'm going to go ahead and make a dot and then I'm going to do two dots on either side at the top and I'm going to make an arc that's going to attach and an arc that's going to attach and you can see how that makes a V-like shape and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do an arc and another arc. Turning my tile, making a dot in the center, a dot on the side, and a dot on the side. I'm going to make an arc and an arc and then an aura and then an aura. Last one right here. Dot at the bottom two dots on either side, arc and arc, aura and aura. You go ahead and finish yours, I'm going to finish mine, and then when we come back we're going to start to work with well. So let's bring well into the piece here. I'm going to come into the center here and make a little circle. Once I've got that circle in there, I'm going to start to bring in those curved lines. So I'm going to come down from the top and land on the left side of the circle. I'm going to turn the tile counterclockwise this time, come from this point here and land on the left side of the circle. I'm going to turn my tile all the way around so that I come into this point and I'm going to land on the left side of the circle. So you can see there as well and then I'm going to go over to the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and make my circle coming down landing on the left hand side. Turning my tile coming down and landing on the left hand side. Turning the tile coming down and landing on the left hand side so that when we come back up look at how cool that looks isn't that pretty and you know I think I'm gonna leave out the aura I think I want to just shade it just the way it is so let's go ahead and go to the other ones I'm gonna come in make a circle and I'm gonna come down to the left hand side turning the tile coming from the corner, land on the left hand side. Turn the tile, come from the corner, land on the left hand side. Look at how cool that looks, just loving it. Alright, come to the other side, coming down, land on the left. Coming down, land on the left. Coming down, land on the left. Look at how pretty that looks on the side. Just love it. It feels like a stained glass window to me. So let's go ahead and come into these pieces right up here. So we've got a circle, dropping down, land on the left. Turn, come into this corner, land on the left. Turn, come into this corner, land on the left. Coming over to the other side. coming down, land on the left. Go to this corner, land on the left. Go to this corner, land on the left. So by now you probably got the hang of it. We've got one more corner to go. Let's do it. Remember to breathe, relax your shoulders, soften your eyes, and look at how cool that is. Alright, you finish up yours, I'm going to finish up mine, and then when we come back, we're going to bring our special guest of honor into the piece. So the name of the piece is Be Well, so let's bring our bee into it, shall we?
So I'm just going to go ahead and bring the bee into it by coming in and creating this little arc that's going to come up and over just like so. Once I have that, I'm going to put another arc right above it. And then I'm going to do one more smaller arc right here. I'm going to go ahead and give my bee his little antennae here. And then I'm going to start to create these little arcs that come out from each corner here. So you can see it's coming from right where the head is meeting the body. I'm going to make a little divot inward and then I'm going to go ahead and bring it in. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, just a little divot inward and bring it into the body. I'll go ahead and I'll start to make my little stripes for my bee. And then once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull my ink. But before I do that, I'm going to get little eyes on my bee here just by doing two little crescent moons and then pulling it in. And then I'll come down and I'll start to bring in a little bit of a sheen right in the center by leaving an interruption in that color. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that. I'm going to do it again, skipping a line and then I'm going to pull it in just like so and then the final piece will come down at the bottom. Super fun, super easy. Let's go ahead and do it again. So I'm going to come in right over here and I'm going to do a nice arc that's going to come up and over. I'm going to do a smaller arc and then a smaller one for his head. I'll give him antennae and then I'm going to go ahead and do those little crescent moons again on the inside, pull in my ink just like so. I'm going to go ahead and give him his wings. I'm going to create that little divot that comes in and then back into the body here. A little divot and then back into the body. Some nice stripes. And then I'll go ahead and I'm going to have a little bit of an interruption there. I'm going to go ahead and pull my ink leaving that interruption in the center so it looks like it's got a little sheen and then a little black at the bottom. Now each one of your bees will be a little bit different and that's just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and do two more. You go ahead and do yours and then when we come back we're going to start in with some color. So we're going to start to bring some color into this here and I'm going to start to work with three different colors. I've got the light aqua which is PC992. I've got Copenhagen blue which is PC906 and I also have in my hand the yellowed orange which is PC1002. Now if you don't have the same colors as me don't worry about it. What I'm looking for is a turquoise, a, a navy blue, and a really nice warm yellow. So to do what we're going to be doing here, we're going to start by using a little bit of the turquoise first. And I'm going to go into each of these pieces and do this very same thing. But I'll just give you a demonstration in these two so that you can really see it. So I'm starting out by going very, very lightly with the light aqua and just giving a soft dusting of color. Remember, whenever you're doing color, you always want to start out with the lightest pressure first and then you can move to darker pressure. Now, you're going to think I'm kind of silly for having you guys remove those center lines for what I'm about to do, but I'm actually doing this because I only wanted it to be very, very light and faint in the background. So you can see that I've picked up the Copenhagen blue and I'm starting to bring in a little bit of a shadow into the side here.
Now once I've got this the way that I want it, I'm going to come back in and apply a little bit of pressure right on this side right here. Same thing here, just a little bit of pressure. I'm going to pick up that light aqua and I'm going to blend it out. Once I have that, for those of you who know me, you know that I love to use my white pencil to do blending. I happen to have the PC938 right here, and all I'm going to do is just blur out a little bit of that light aqua to make it super soft and pastel-y. Now I'm going to go through the whole piece and do just like that in each of my petals and then when we come back we're going to add a little bit of wallpaper and a little bit of yellow into the piece. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around. I'm going to bring in another tangle for us and this is called Zonked. And Zonked is one of my favorite tangles. I come back to it constantly. And all it is, is it's two triangles, or three, and you create this little bit of heaviness on the tip of each of these triangles, and it creates this beautiful pattern. So that is Zonked. Let's take Zonked and use it in our wallpaper. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick back up that darker color. And remember, wallpaper is where you are tangling with the color that you're coloring with. And so I'm going to take Zonked, and you can see that my pencil is really well sharpened up. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give this a nice medium push and add it into the petals here. And I think I'll just do two of them for this. And then I'll go ahead and I'll add a little bit of pressure on the tips. And I love the way that that looks. I think it gives it such an elegance. I'm going to drop down, do it again. Bring a little heaviness into the points. And look at how pretty that is. Now I can go all the way around the piece and do that. I'm going to leave these center pieces alone because they're so small. We'll do something a little bit different in there, but you can still do it in these over here. So I'm going to go all the way around the piece and do just that. And then when we come back, we're going to add in a little yellow. All right, so I'm really loving this. I hope you are too. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit. And I've got that yellow in my hand that I was talking about earlier. And for me, one of the things that I love is to make my uh, my color pencils look like watercolors. And I'm just going to very softly add in just a couple of little dustings of that yellow right on the left hand side. And I'm going to just add it very randomly in here and just lightly bring it in. I'm not overpowering the piece with it. It's just a little dusting of it. So you can see that I'm just working on the outer realms of the piece. And you'll notice that I'm not putting it in the very outside edges of it. I'm just keeping it on the inside. And you can see that just by doing that, it gives it a real nice softness and a really nice movement too, almost as if it's got a little sheen going on in there. You can see that I'm starting to work my way inward here as I turn the tile. And just bringing this in. And look at how pretty that looks with a little bit of that yellow. Isn't that lovely? So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to do mine. And one of the things that you can do if you want to is you can come back in with a little bit of that white. Make sure that there's nothing on it and just go ahead and give a little blur out to that yellow if you want to. Okay, so have some fun with that, play, and then when we come back, we're going to start to bring a little bit more yellow into the piece. 
So I'm going to take some of that yellow and bring it into the center, but I'm going to add an accent color into it. And that color is magenta, PC930. Mine's a little bit worn away because I've had this pencil for so long. So let's go ahead and focus in on the center here. I'm going to go ahead and do a really soft dusting of that yellow and you'll see that I'm going to keep a little bit of a light source on the left hand side of that centerpiece here. And I'm going to bring in just a touch of that magenta on the corners here. Just giving it a little bit of interest and I'll push a little bit harder on the outside edge just to give it a little bit of drama. Now once I've got that, I'm going to pick back up that yellow again and I'm going to blur out where the magenta is meeting the yellow with little circles. So it's just a little circular motion just giving this a little bit of interest. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that a little bit more. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that white and I'm going to blur out a little bit more of that yellow and red together. And that brings a really nice softness to this that I just really like and I hope that you do too. Okay, so go ahead and do yours and then when we come back we're going to continue with that color combo. So let's take some of that yellow and bring it into the background here. I'm going to go ahead and use this. Now you can see that I'm pretty well sharpened up. I'm going to rub the side of the pencil into the paper here. And you can see that that helps me to get a little bit more of the paper covered rather than using the point of the pencil. So you can see that I'm just running it through and working all the way around our piece here. I'm going to come over to the other side and do the same. Once I've got it the way that I want it, I'm going to go ahead and pick up a little bit of that magenta and start to just bring it into the points here. I'm going really lightly with the magenta and just giving it a softening right around the edges. I'll do the same thing over here and over here. You can give a little bit of pressure right at the point just for a little bit of intensity. And then watch what's going to happen. I'm going to take that yellow again and I'm going to start to blur it out. I'm using a medium pressure and then I'm going to start to run it back into the magenta. Little circles to move that pigment around. I'm going to turn the tile and just start to bring that in and let it run out a little bit away from the corners here. Now once I've got that I'm going to go ahead and pick up a little bit of that white again and I'm going to blur out some of that roughness of color in here and just bring a little softness in. Okay? So I'm going to do that in all four of my corners, just that same technique that I just showed you now. So you go ahead and do yours and I'm going to do mine. So I'm loving the way that looks. I hope you are too. Let's take these colors and start to carry them outward here. I'm going to come out into the corner here and let's zoom in on this. We're going to go ahead and add in a little bit of yellow into our B here and you're just going to see me come in with a little bit of yellow on each corner but you'll notice that I'm leaving a little white in the center. So a little yellow and a little bit of yellow. Now I'm going to leave this little portion alone. That's going to be gray a little bit later on. So let's go around and dust in our bees all the way around the piece. So just a little bit of yellow on each side with a little sheen of white on the inside here, just like so. Let's start to pick up our magenta here and bring in a little bit of interest into the piece. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start to bring some shading into well 
by coming in right underneath this line right here. You're going to see me just lightly, lightly dust in a little bit of a shadow. I'll come over here right where this line is and bring in a little dusting as well. Ha ha ha. <laughs> And then I'll come over here and I'll do the same thing. Really, really soft. Once I've got that in there, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press a little bit more heavily into where the black line is to bring a little bit of drama into the piece. You can see that I'm turning the tile to make it work for my hands here. And same thing over here. Once I've got that the way that I want it, and I might just add a little bit more right in here, I'm going to pick up a little bit of that yellow and I'm going to dust it right along the edge in here. Love that feeling, gives it a watercolor like feel, very soft, very elegant. It's a wonderful way to shade well. And if you want, you can pick up a little bit of your white, make sure there's nothing on it. You can see I'm kind of cleaning that off, and I'm going to blur it out a little bit, give it that softness. And you'll notice that I'm kind of pulling back and getting into where that richer stuff is first. Um, you can see that as I start in the yellow, then I pull back in. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that lovely? It never ceases to amaze me what these Prismacolors can do. They are just so fun. So I'm going to do that same technique all the way through, all the way around the piece. So you go ahead and do yours, I'm going to do mine, and then when we come back we're going to add another splash of blue into the piece. So let's bring the blues back into the piece here. I've gone back to the original blues that we're working with, and we're going to focus in on the B. And I'm just going to very lightly dust in that lighter light aqua around the B and just bring a little bit of softness around him or her because she could be the queen B, you know. <laughs> and then I'm going to pick up a little bit of that darker blue and just bring a little bit of that shadow around the corner and underneath the wings of our bee. Now you know me, I'm going to go ahead and blur those edges out with a little bit of that light aqua just to give it a little bit of softness. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of that white, making sure that there's no other colors on it, and just lightly blur out and give it a really nice feel. So you go ahead and do yours, I'm going to do mine. So we're going to start to bring a little bit of graphite into the piece here. And we're going to start with the B first. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the B. And I'm just going to take my little number two pencil. I happen to have a mechanical pencil in my hand. And I'm just going to do a little dusting of that gray on the little area of the bee that we have. I'm going to pick up my tortillon, and this is where you can pick up a Q-tip if you don't have a tortillon, and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a blend out. And then I'm also going to come into the wings here and give a little bit of gray into the wings and blur that out too. Now once I've got that the way that I want it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in a little tic-tac-toe board or a grid into the wings of my bee here, just to give it a little bit of softness. So I'm just going to come in 
can bring a little bit of that into the bee just to give the bee a little bit of interest there. Now if you've lost a little bit of the white like I have inside of the bee, you're going to see me pick up my little uh, eraser tool that I was using earlier. This is the Faber-Castell eraser and you can see that that just brought me back a little bit of sheen and I love these erasers because you can uh, you can make them as pointy as you want them to be and really use them as a tool. So look at how fun that is with that bee in the corner. So go ahead and do your bees and then when we come back we're going to add some graphite into the center. So let's bring a little bit of that graphite into the center piece here. I'm going to take a little bit of my number two pencil and just start to dust a little bit of graphite into the very inside edges of these petals here. You're going to see me just bring this in through a few of these so that you get the idea of what I'm up to. So I'm just going through and getting into some of these and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my tortillon again and I'm going to start to give this a little bit of a blend out. Now you'll notice that I'm leaving the points of the piece nice and light. getting down over here and I'm going to go ahead and start to move through these other pieces as well and what I love about this is that it tends to give it a little bit of gravity and take something that was really really busy and give it a little bit of um, some intensity which I love. I'm going to come in and give this a little bit more of a shadow down at the bottom. And you can already see that this is starting to really pick up and give it just a lot of character. So I'm going to go all the way around and do that with mine you go ahead and do yours and then if you want to set it with a little bit of white for those of you who are my left-handed students and have that terrible time of dealing with um, working with graphite you can always come in and just add a little bit of white to set your graphite so that it doesn't smear or smudge and I'll be doing that for mine I love this technique and I've been using it a lot lately and it's brought me back to the graphite camp which has been really really fun so you go ahead and do yours I'm gonna do mine I'm gonna add a little bit more graphite into the piece here and I'm gonna come in right around the front circle here and I'll just do a little bit of shading on each side of the little circle that we have here and then I'm going to pick up my tortillon and give it a little bit of a blend just to soften it up a little bit. Now I do also want to come up into where our little bee is and I'm going to do a little bit of shading in these little auras right in here so you're going to see me come in and just do a little bit of shading in there. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that too. And I'll come in with my tortillon and give that a little blur. Or you can do this with your white pencil too because it's a nice small space. You can just sharpen up your white pencil and blur it out with that as well. So I'm going to go all the way around and do just that in all of my corners. Now I'm going to come back in with a little bit of my pen here and I'm going to add in a little crescent moon and a little bit of pooling of my ink inside of well. So I'm just going to bring that into the piece here just to give this a little bit of pop and we're going to be adding a little bit more black throughout the piece but before we do that go ahead and do your wells just like so. So let's do some highlighting in this piece. I have my Jelly Roll 08 white gel pen. You could use the Uniball white, you could use the Posca white, whatever your favorite white gel pen is, go ahead and grab it. 
and all I'm going to do is bring in a little bit of white into the centerpiece here. So I'm just going to come in and add a little bit of a sheen of light right in the center and a little dot just like so to give it a little bit of shine. Now if you find that you lost a little bit of your white in your well you could go around and add a little bit of white into your well just to give it a little bit of pop like over here this one got a little small so I'll just give it a little pop just like so you know the white pens are wonderful for hiding a multitude of sins so I, I think they're great um, for doing any kind of uh, correction work that you want to do but also just to add in a little bit of shine so if you wanted to stop right here, I would totally understand. This is really pretty. I think it's really fun. But you know me, and I love my colors really saturated. So I'm going to pick up the Identa pen by Sakura. This is one of my favorite pens for pooling ink and adding a lot of drama into the piece. Now, if you want to keep it white, that's totally fine. But I'm going to add a little bit more to the piece. The IdentiPen has a really nice thick nib on it and it makes it a perfect uh, tool for doing this. Now if you don't have one of these, grab a Sharpie or grab your favorite pooling pen. So I'm going to come into the corner here and you can see that I've got the triangle outlined here. And all I'm going to do is come in and start pooling my ink around the triangle. And what I love about working with black is that it just gives everything a really graphic feel. So I'm just going to turn my tile, make it work for my hands here. And remember, the lighter you go, the more the ink flows. So go light with these pens. You don't have to push hard. I'm just tickling the page with the pen. And you can already see that this is really going to pop. So I'm just going to turn and get right in here. going across the bottom. And what I love about this is that it's a nice correlation with the B. So it just kind of gives that B a little bit more interest when you put the black in there. And I'm going to go around and I'm going to do that all the way throughout the piece. So you can already see, look at how different it is with the black versus with the white. It's not wrong, it's just different. So if you're interested in trying it with the black, go ahead and grab your black pen and do just that. Isn't that so fun? I love seeing the difference between the two. I think it's really interesting. So I've gone ahead and just added my little chop into the piece. I like to hide it in the piece there. And so for me, this is my way of taking a moment to really enjoy what we've created. This is self-care time. And I was talking about it with you guys earlier, be well and mental health month. And so I hope that every time you sit down and do a tangle with me, this is time that you take care of yourself and do something good for you. All right. So if you enjoyed the class today, please give it a thumbs up or leave it a nice review. Even better, you can hit the subscribe button and that way you'll be notified every time I add a class to my channel. And even best, share Zentangle with a friend. Invite a friend over and you guys can do the videos together. It's a great way to spend time with a friend and doing something good for yourself at the same time.
I'd love to see your creations, so if you want to head over to the Tangled Yogi Art Community page on Facebook, you can go ahead and answer those little security questions and you're into a wonderful community of people who are very supportive and they always show all the different things they do with my classes and I always learn from my students. It's really a give and take and so I just want to say please, please, please join us. It's a really great group. All right, well, that's it for me. I'm Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi. I'll see you next time.